Hello everyone, it's Matsmus. Thank you so much for joining me today on this video. We're going back to the world of APCs today and a very infamous Russian APC, the BTR-80. And what a little vehicle it is. I mean, you know, a lot of these vehicles, I always don't remember the designations for them all. There's so many different variations and types, modifications, and in general just models, uh, which Russia are very good at producing multiple different variants of things, and sometimes I just can't keep up. But I thought, you know what, I've been recently playing uh, some games which encompass this vehicle, and I thought, you know, let's just do a video on it. It's an interesting bit of kit. So guys, as always, we will go over the overview of the vehicle, its specifications, a little bit about its history, and then I'll actually put my own little tidbit of uh, personal opinion on this vehicle overall. Guys, I would really appreciate it if you do enjoy my content and wish to support my channel to go check out my Patreon page. The link is in the description below. And if you do enjoy today's video, uh, please feel free to subscribe and hit that little bell button just to be notified of any upcoming videos. So let's talk about this impressive little APC then from Russia. The BTR-80 was the logical evolution of the wheeled armoured personnel carrier series from the BTR range that more or less hits its stride in the 1960s with the development of the BTR-60. Now you're probably wondering, well why didn't you just start off doing reviews on the BTR-60? Well, like I said recently, I saw the BTR-80 coming across in my gameplay a lot and I thought, you know what, let's just touch base on it. The BTR-80 itself was developed to replace both the BTR-60 and similar BTR-70 models and enter production in 1986, seeing operational service soon after. The BTR-80 was based on the lessons learned from the design and operation of the BTR-70 and incorporates several key strengths over its designs while bringing into the various different technological suites that are required by today's battlefield standards and environments. Taking the BTR-70 as a standing point, most Soviet engineers did away with the twin gasoline engine setup for the former BTR-60 and BTR-70 designs, and instead fitted a single V8 form 8-cylinder Kame Z7403 series diesel engine to deliver 260 horsepower at 2600 RPM. The characteristic 8-road vehicle arrangement was retained as standard for most BTRs, and the implementation of the new power plant required some restructuring of the rear engine compartment which raised the whole line rear. Modernized sighting was placed onto the vehicle, including night vision to both the driver and the commander, and an infrared searchlight. Arm was fitted to revise a low profile one man turret and given a 360 degree traverse and a 60 degrees plus or minus elevation to counter low flying aircraft and engage targets even if the vehicle was hampered along slope terrain. The standard operating crew of this vehicle included a driver, commander and gunner, while up to 8 combat ready soldiers could be ferried in relative safety in a revised fighting compartment. The driver and commander were situated at the front of the hull, under the shallow glacis plate, with the gunner manning the powered turret system above. Passengers could take part in given firefights thanks to the inclusion of round firing ports, very similar to the Bradley, complete with ball mounts located on each side, three on each side in fact, and the front facings of the hull. The vehicle's operating weight was listed at nearly 15 tons while displaying a running length of around 7.65 meters and a width of 2.9 meters and a total height of 2.35 meters. So guys, it's a pretty long vehicle. It's not, you know, short based, it's, it's quite long. Independent suspension and drive power was afforded to all eight wheels and operational ranges were listed out to around 600 kilometers. Steering was assisted at only the front four wheels. There was a centralized tire pressure system maintained that required the levels of all eight wheel systems to be controlled by the driver. This was done so that the vehicle could on the fly change the pressures of the tires to maintain the different variants of terrain that it's crossing, including trying to go across extremely muddy terrain which sometimes does not suit wheeled vehicles. The BTR-80 was designed with a certain level of self-survivability in mind and could really manage to lose two of its eight road wheels and still keep itself quite viable on the battlefield. 
the top speed was 80 kilometers on smooth paved surfaces and obviously a lot lesser on rough and uneven terrain. It was given an amphibious capability and could traverse relatively calm waters at roughly around 9 km per hour with this integrated water jet propulsion system that required no outward preparation by the crew. The crew was also protected in the event of a nuclear fallout and chemical weapon attack by nuclear, biological and chemical weapons, and a pressurised fighter compartment was provided by an MBC suite. Six 81mm smoke grenades discharges were also fitted to the rear of the turret and to set fire forwards to self-protection in combat environments. The armour was designed heavy enough to deflect or stop only small arms fire and artillery spray but was really not specifically designed to withstand direct hits from large calibre weapons, rocket propelled grenades or anti-tank missile weapons. It's one of its biggest weaknesses of this vehicle guys was its armour. Troops exited and entered the BTR-80 through hull split side doors found on the hull sides between forward and rearward wheel pairings between axles of 2 and 3. Each door was split horizontally with the upper portion hinged to the open forwards and the lower portion folded down to become a step capable of supporting the weight of a soldier as he embarks. A third door section along the hull roof could similarly flip upwards towards the centerline for increased headroom and speedy insertion extractions. Once in service, the BTR-80 had proven a winner for the Red Army with off-road performance equal to that of any tracked vehicle system coupled with itself at the time, with excellent on-road performance for being able to get troops along the battlefield very, very quickly. Where it lacked was really its protection and firepower. Not its specifically designed forte, however it did make up for it in mobility and speed which was the key to its success. The BTR-80 went into service with a plethora of different armies around the world including Colombia, Hungary, Romania, Ukraine, North Korea, South Korea and among others. Funnily enough, this vehicle also had a little winch on board which was able to actually pull around 4-6 to six tons for self-extraction if it got stuck in the mud, which being a wheeled vehicle it's always gonna happen. I love my tracked vehicles. I'm just kidding, but really though it's a handy thing to have. The vehicle was armed with an impressive 14.5mm heavy machine gun and a coaxial 7.62mm machine gun which made it quite capable of being able to defend that infantry as it disembarked. There were multiple different variants of this vehicle too, as standard with Russian military vehicles. BTR 80K was the command vehicle. The BTR-80 Alpha was the armoured personnel carrier fitted with an externally mounted weapon system inclusive of that are some weapon systems that can be able to take out aircraft and other tanks. The BTR-82 was an upgraded version upgraded in 2009. It's a lot better protected and powered by a more powerful engine and developed with an extra 300 horsepower. It's also armed with a 30mm cannon and the BTR-82 is currently in service with Azerbaijan and Kazakhstan. In 2010, Russia stopped ordering the BTR-80 and obtained the BTR-82 until as a stopgap measure until the new APC becomes available, which we're all looking at right now is the T-15 and I'm not too sure exactly what they're going to do with these older vehicles, but it will be interesting to see if they actually keep them in service. I think they're going to. The BTR-90 was actually its final replacement and the armor personnel carry was armed with the 30mm cannon along with the ATGM launcher. The BTR-3U is the improved Ukrainian variant. There is also the Brem K or the Armoured Recovery Vehicle and the 1B118 Artillery Control Vehicle. There are also multiple ambulances of this variant. The BM1, the BM2 and the BM3 are the armoured ambulances of the BTR-80. So overall guys, this vehicle is quite an impressive little APC for Russia's military and militaries around the world, hence why it's been staying in service for quite some time. Being upgraded from the 60 and 70 up to the 80, it's still in service today and that speaks quite a bit for this vehicle. In my own personal opinion, this vehicle does have some distinct advantages. First of all, good visibility and high activity of the occupants inside. Being able to actually utilize weapon platforms on the side of the vehicle back in its day was obviously very, very key. There was also low fumes of contamination of inhabited compartments, good floatability, and provided really good maintaining of trim by the stern. This was great guys, a vehicle that could actually cross water and just be an armoured boat. It's something that the West has really not focused on too much, being able to cross rivers with their vehicles. We'd prefer to have these heavily armoured beasts, but at the end of the day, for you know, armoured rushing and getting into an environment very, very quickly and transferring troops in the battlefield very quickly, rivers are a huge obstacle and this, you know, vehicle was able to traverse them very, very easily. Also, the uniformed wheeled load required for a high cross-country capacity of a vehicle like this is fantastic. Four straight wheels like that on a big long platform is able to transport not only a lot of troops but give them a really good flat wheelbase to be able to traverse some really nasty terrain. 
It also, with that being said, has a really good high trench crossing capability up to around 2 meters wide and a blast survivability of the running gear through the use of the four axle wheel running gear layouts. Again, this is great, if the vehicle can take a couple of hits onto its wheels, it can keep rolling, and crossing trenches is quite important really, I mean a lot of people um, disregard it as being a key feature of a vehicle, but it is, and especially for a vehicle that has wheels. It also has the capability to move behind tanks along tank tracks with a good lateral stability. It has a very low side roll of around 25 degrees due to its broad wheel track, and I know I'm a tank fan, but you know my respects to wheeled vehicles, especially coming from a Canada that's currently using a wheeled vehicle as our infantry support vehicle. I must have a big respect for the top speed of this vehicle too, at 80 kilometers an hour on road. That's an incredible piece of kit to get troops where they need to be with, you know, uh, basic protection for mobilization of armored infantry or mechanized infantry. And that's really, really cool. Uh, and nice to see that uh, Russia is continuing that trend with some of the more modern wheeled APCs that they're actually producing. Those bulletproof tubeless tyres with remote pressure regulation really are pretty key um, and to allow them to actually keep moving for up to 200 kilometres even after they've been punctured by bullets or other calibers um, when they've lost all their pressures, that's, that's impressive and I'm not sure if they're going to continue this trend of keeping these you know, eight wheeled vehicles rolling but uh, in terms of being able to carry eight troops and lose a couple of wheels or a bit of the axle and keep it rolling, that's impressive in terms of mobility and I really do think that's what they were focusing on when they produced this vehicle. The fact that they've continually upgraded this vehicle, again, really does speak its service a little bit. I mean, countries around the world are still using it as we see right here, Ukraine and doing some target practice. And, uh, you know, they've put simple little fixes on there, whether it be different, you know, gunner sights for weapons usage at both day and night. Uh, and armor protection, I think, is something that I really need to do a little bit more research on. I couldn't find much information on what they've actually done to increase protection of these vehicles. I have honestly never seen any ERA or explosive reactive armor on any of these vehicles before. I'm pretty sure it does exist, but I don't think it's something they've really focused so much on because it's not really required. They're not putting these things against other main battle tanks. They're not requiring that heavy duty armor. This is really kind of to prevent, you know, uh, troops getting slammed with artillery or small arms fire from ambush and such. And it seems to be doing the job pretty well. Um, I've got to admit though, it would have been nice to see a little bit more firepower out of this uh, weapon system, but really I think it speaks for itself if it's continually being used right now and it provides enough support for the troops on the ground to actually cover them as they disembark. It'd be nice to speak to people who've actually utilized this thing before, whether it be driver, commander, or, uh, you know, infantry support. If you have, please leave me a comment below. I'd love to hear your opinion on this vehicle. And overall, guys, let me know what you think about this vehicle. I mean, personally, I think it's an extremely impressive uh, eight-wheeled armor personnel carrier. Very capable of protecting its troops on the ground and providing them enough fire support to get them where they need to be. It's just a real letdown with its armor capability, um, but I guess what makes up for that is its mobility, and I really do think that's what they were focusing on from the Russian military in its day. Uh, those infantry having that support is really, really key, and them getting where they need to be is protected as best as possible. Really, really happy to see that that's something that they wish to do. Guys, I would love it if you could leave me a like if you enjoyed today's video. Like I said before, leave me your comments about not only um, what you think of the vehicle, what you think of my video in general. So really an impressive vehicle overall from Russia and they have clearly done very very well in being able to provide those troops support and let's just hope in the future there's going to be even more special interesting vehicles that we can review. Guys have a wonderful day once again thank you for watching and all the best bye bye.